Hi, everybody, and welcome to Tech Morning Asia show. We are so privileged, you know, to be joined by Mr. Misha Benoliel, who is the co-founder of Nodal, as well as the founder of Open Garden. Welcome, Misha. Thank you, Gloria, for having me on your show today. You're welcome. So, Misha, you live in the States, right? In Silicon Valley. What are you doing in Hong Kong at this present time? I live in San Francisco. Yes. And uh, I've been traveling very often to Hong Kong. Okay. And this time I came for two ma major reasons. One, to uh, participate into a big crypto event, which is called Token 2049. Yes. And also for, I mean, business reasons, just to build partnerships with people in the region. Sure. For my new company called Nodal, which mm -hmm. is um, a wireless network for... The Internet of Things. Absolutely. We'll, we'll dive more into that later. Excellent. So, Misha, tell us what inspired you to become an entrepreneur as early as you did against mm -hmm. all odds? I had a dream when I was a kid, which was always to connect the planet for free because oh, okay. I believe, uh, like, if you have the freedom to connect, you can learn. That's good. You can access any type of information. Sure. And that can change your life, mm. no matter from where you are, where yeah. you were born, and the uh, whether your family is wealthy or not. Sure. If you have access to information, then you can really change your life and become the person you want to become. Sure. So I had that dream since I was a kid. I was lucky to have a computer uh, that my father brought home and I started to code it when I was eight. Oh, wow. And uh, so I kept that passion for computers and machines. Yeah. And uh, I built uh, my first company uh, actually in the telecom space. Mm -hmm. And then I kept on having projects in the telecom and the internet space. Uh, moved to San Francisco yeah. uh, back in 2011 yes. to build a company called Open Garden where we built uh, a technology of peer-to-peer -peer mesh networks yes. and, uh, and then left the company in uh, 2016 to uh, build new projects. And, uh, and now your current baby, Nodal. And my current baby, absolutely, <laughs> Nodal, uh, which is a, a wireless network for sure. the Internet of Things. Yes. So you've been an entrepreneur for a long time. Mm -hmm. When you first started, what do you think was the hardest challenge that you had to overcome? And if there are any failures, how did you pick yourself up and keep going? Well, there are many challenges, but I think you... The, I always say I forget each time I start a company how hard it is, wow. and probably that's a good thing. Wow. <laughs> because if I remember how hard it is each yes. time, I, uh, yeah, I don't know if I would have the same uh, passion that's and, and good energy. That's a lot of people are, uh, are put off, are turned off by you know the the challenges. So that's a good but thing. But I think the rule number one is uh, never give up. Uh, Often because good. when you are in very challenging times and yes. moments, it's always in these moments where you believe that uh, nothing is gonna. I mean that you will have to stop or uh, that you, you will be done or the company will stop, that mm -hmm. something happens. Yes. And that's because you, you have to push and keep on persevering. Absolutely. And uh, it's, it's, I mean, I notice that in many startups, mm -hmm. it's often when you are about to break that yeah. then you make the next leap to the next level. Yeah. And it goes in cycle like that uh, till, uh, till you have a successful company and you're able to generate profits and, yeah. uh, and grow. Um, but it's fascinating. It I is. I mean, it's fascinating. It is, it, it's it is a, and I admire you entrepreneurs. I really do. I think for me, if I had to start, because I want to start something as well, but I think for me, the, the greatest challenge is obviously fear. You have to first overcome that fear and just start. But I mm -hmm. kind of feel like I'm also the person that if I had to fail at first go, then it's over. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we all have fear anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's a good thing that you can acknowledge it. Sure. Uh, it's, uh, I think actually it's, a, it's very important mm. because that's the first step to enable you to be able to face it. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, when you don't face it in general, it's a problem and uh, life or events brings you what you have to face in yeah. order to face it. So <laughs> True. I, I verified that many times cool. in my career as an entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the company that you co-founded and that mm -hmm. you, you founded actually, but you left called mm -hmm. Open Garden. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm very, I've always been intrigued by Fire, Fire Chat, the Fire mm -hmm. Chat app, which is like you said, a peer-to-peer -peer messaging um, mm -hmm. app. How does this app work with no internet or no cellular network? How so, did you make that possible? So we built this technology with Open Garden called the Peer-to-Peer Mesh. Yes. And that was enabling smartphones to communicate with one another mm -hmm. when you don't have a signal. So it yeah. used the radios in the phone to connect with other phones in mm -hmm. proximity. Yeah. And we um, basically built this messaging app, FireChat, to leverage the technology and show what was possible with it. Okay. So when you have smartphones in proximity, mm. they can uh, find each other. And then if a message cannot go to the internet directly, it will hop onto phones yeah. next to you till one phone goes to the internet, uh, connects to the internet and the message can go to the internet. Yes. Or if you are in a group and uh, the message reach people who are in that group in a proximity, then the message will spread locally. Sure. What was it exactly that inspired you to start Open Garden, the fire, the fire chat? Well, there are many reasons. I have always been pissed off at carriers 
for many years Tell with me about the, it. the what, what I call the the bill shock when you travel and yeah. a new room and you yeah. come back home and then you have a, like a thousand dollar two thousand dollar bill. bill. Yeah. Um, and I always thought like wherever you are, you mm -hmm. should be able to connect absolutely um, as if you were at home. Absolutely. So that's what inspired the beginning Especially of the technology. Even when you leave your own home to travel somewhere else, I think it's the most important time that you need connection. You know mm -hmm. to. To let people know exactly, you know, what's going on with you. So, exactly. Yeah. So nowadays it's becoming better because I think, uh, I mean, the cost of connection and internet on, on mobile is, is really going down. It's getting cheaper, yeah. I mean, I arrived in Hong Kong and two days ago I bought for a hundred Hong Kong dollar, like eight gear plan for a week. I mean, yeah, that was no, not possible a couple of years ago. So our advantage is getting cheaper. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So that's what... Uh, ma inspired me and also to be able to have a technology that guarantees that you always have an access to the yes. internet mm -hmm. um, and uh, when I left the company in 2016 yes. um, I I was really uh, amazed by the power of what I call the mm -hmm. smartphone infrastructure mm -hmm. smartphone infrastructure yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean we all have a smartphone in our pocket today yeah. or Absolutely. most of the people on the planet yeah. uh, and it's, if it's not the case it's gonna be I mean pretty soon the case <laughs> sure. and uh, and so it's it's a real infrastructure, mm. and the smartphones are very powerful machines. Mm. They have all sorts of wireless radios, Absolutely. and I and I found out that it was probably the best way to connect um, objects, sensors in the future because mm. people are everywhere, yeah. they move around, and so that's what I did in my new company called sure. Nodal, yeah. where we build the largest uh, wireless IoT network mm -hmm. um, in the world, yeah. and uh, we are having some pretty good results. Sure. Um, so there is a. One thing I noticed when you're mm. a first-time entrepreneur, yeah. you're always about creativity and the product. And passion and drive. And, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and when you, you build other businesses, you realize that one key element for mm. building a successful company sure. fast is distribution. Distribution, that's cool. How did you pinpoint that? I mean, I realized that after building companies, that yeah. it's, so, it's so important. So it's very important to spend time on knowing how you're going to distribute your product sure, and make it sure. available to the largest number of companies Absolutely. or people. Mm -hmm. And so in no with Nodal, we, we found a very interesting way of incentivizing adoption of uh, this network, okay. which is 100% software. So mm -hmm. there is no antenna, no uh, routers, no uh, towers, for yeah. example, compared to cellular networks, sure. because we leverage the existing ones. Yeah. Uh, so we push a piece of software on smartphones. And mm -hmm. for that, we partner with app developers and we offer them a new source of revenue. Yeah. Uh, so basically, they compete and they are uh, participating in this global network by yeah. moving data sure. from uh, objects and items around them, yeah. around the phones. And uh, we reward them with our cryptocurrency for doing that. That's crazy. So we have a cryptocurrency which is called Nodal Coin. Yes. And, and this uh, is with Nodal, by the way, not with um, FiCheck. <laughs> yeah. So we reward the, the, the app developers for doing this job. Yes. And so far, we are on more than 20 million smartphones today. And every day, we have more than 5 million smartphones doing work. That's crazy. Now, Misha, tell me, with especially with FireChat, mm -hmm. with, with a company like that, how do you think, and how we've just dived into how, you know, connectivity and connecting mm. with people from different parts of the world is so important. How do you think it has sort of impacted or somewhat shifted the way we communicate now? I think it showed that um, connectivity could be achieved in uh, many different uh, situations, which Absolutely. sometimes can be extreme mm -hmm. or very special. Uh, especially with Firefight, we built it for the Festival of Burning, Burning Man, Man, which yes. is happening in, in Nevada every year in the, in the United yeah, States. I've seen, I mean, it looks, and at the beginning of Burning Man, you have absolutely had no connectivity. Yes. So now they have, uh, I think there is one cell tower and they managed to beam a signal from, uh, from a satellite. So That's cool. if you are close to that tower, you can get some uh, yeah. kind of access. Now in the past, there was no, there was no sort of connection, right? Because it's more no, like in the desert. Exactly. Uh, there yeah. was no connectivity at all. So um, the only way to, I mean, to find your friends why it's serendipity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, you, or you would leave so, a note somewhere. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, definitely. And, um, it had to be a serendipity. So, the, so when we built the app, yeah. it was really the goal was to have a, a demonstrator of the technology mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to have it used at Burning Man. Sure. So it started to be used at Burning Man. Many so Burning music Man was festivals. the tester. Was it, would you say it was the testing was a testing point? It was, it was a oh. test and a, a good environment to test this kind cool. of technologies. Cool. 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 Uh, and then got used in music festival and many other different events from, uh, I would say, uh, I mean, demonstrations from people to, uh, to also um, extreme situations like disaster recovery situations. Yep, yep. Now the, the phone are evolving all the time. The, 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 the wireless radios in the phones are evolving yes. all the time. And I think at some point it's going to become something that 
it's going to be like a standard. Absolutely. Like a, you will be able to connect to cellular tower yeah. or be able to, if you don't have access to sure. another device or another yeah. phone next to you that will have access to the internet. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to become more and more common. That's cool. So with regards to Nodal, what are some of the future plans going forward? So we are very excited uh, <laughs> because we, are, we announced uh, actually a couple of weeks ago during Mobile World Congress, uh, our first partnership with a, a, a large OEM, which mm. is uh, HTC. So sure. HTC is launching a, a blockchain phone, which mm. is called the Exodus. Yes, Exodus. And we're super excited because for the first time, um, consumers, so people who have the phone, will be able to launch our consumer app. And uh, instead of rewarding app developers, yeah. we will reward consumers directly oh, for cool. sharing some of the resources of their phone, which are um, the radios, yeah. so the wireless radios in the phone, uh, and so some bandwidth. That's so cool. And uh, so as a user, as you walk around yes. <laughs> with your Exodus HTC phone, you will be able to, uh, to collect data from sensors or other electronic devices. Yeah. That range is, the range is pretty, is pretty broad. It goes from uh, maybe a, a, a scooter, mm. so the, the micro mobility space, sure. a scooter or a bike who uh, wants to uh, basically uh, be discovered so yes. you can p prove its location. Yeah. Uh, to uh, small items like sensors, temperature sensors, yeah. um, to uh, pollution sensors, for example, also, sure. uh, to any other electronic devices that needs an access to the internet. Absolutely. So we, we are increasing now the number of partnerships we're having with people in the, in the industry. And uh, I mean, super exciting yes. also because I think Users deserve to be uh, rewarded Absolutely. for what's happening Absolutely. on their phone of and course, for sharing we actually all the. Want free thing. <laughs> and I think it, it, it's, it's just the beginning. Um, the, so the, the Exodus HTC phone also has, for example, a, a browser that you heard about called Brave. Uh, yes. With the attention token. Yes. Uh, Heart token is all about rewarding for moving data. Sure. Rewarding users, and uh, I think uh, there's going to be that's going to be the new trend. I think Absolutely. more and more people, instead of having. Uh, large organizations yeah. basically taking money from selling mm. users data. Yeah. Uh, people will become the one who will decide what's happening on their phone and how the data or the resources of their phone will be used and they will be able to monetize, monetize it yes. and get rewarded and get revenue directly sure. for it. So is this the latest um, tech, the latest or the, the current technology that you think will disrupt, you know, how phones work today? I think it's going to change behaviors. Okay. That's I think it's a, uh, it's a, um, a new trend mm -hmm. that's starting now. I think also people are more uh, cautious about uh, privacy, Absolutely. how the data, uh, basically uh, their data is being used mm -hmm. and that more and more they will want to be the one be rewarded for doing work or sharing resources on their computer or, sure. their, or their phone. And uh, I think it's actually great. Okay. It may lead one day to the UBI, the famous UBI, which is a universal basic income sure. that many people talk about in Silicon Valley. Yeah. And wouldn't it be great if you can just, by walking around with your phone, have a monthly revenue and then decide <laughs> how you spend that money? Absolutely. That would be dope. Uh, so I think uh, that's the beginning, of it, the beginning of it. Cool. So you mentioned that that is what is going to change behaviors. Mm -hmm. what, do you think, what do you think is going to be that it thing that will change, that will disrupt you know, this industry? Well, the blockchain technology is enabling this. Absolutely. The, um, the use of smart contracts, mm. uh, cryptography, mm -hmm. all these new technologies that are becoming more common and commonly used yes. are going to change the way people build applications mm. and uh, the way you access services. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm here for Token 2049. Absolutely. Now, Misha, final question. What do you think? So you've just shared to ask some of, you know, the future prospects for Nodal. Mm. As, a, as an entrepreneur who's been at this game for a very long time, mm. what, do you have an idea of what, where do you sort of see yourself in the next 10 to 15 years? Do you think it'll be still with Nodal or there'll be something else? <laughs> well, because I, you seem to be going, you keep going and you keep going. I think Nodal has a great future. It does. Uh, I, I think, think so uh, what we do speci specifically with, uh, we created a new proof of work, which mm -hmm. is called proof of connectivity. Okay. And what does I, that do exactly? So it's, we, uh, we quantify the work uh, that is done mm -hmm. for moving data. Yes. And we, um, we, um, we assign basically a value to each packet, yes. so a piece of information that is moved by your phone. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is applied today for IoT devices yes. using the Bluetooth Low Energy Interface. Okay. Um, but I feel this can be applied to any other wireless uh, signal at some point. Cool. And uh, I wish that it, it may become a way to actually realize one of my dreams, which is to provide uh, 
connectivity for free oh, at some point. Oh, that would be amazing. I think or, that, I, or contribute and push the, the limits further. Absolutely. I think that was actually another question I wanted to ask you, something a little more off topic, mm. but um, also, you know, I'm technology orientated. So I'm from Africa and I think that's one of the continents where not everybody has access to, mm -hmm. um, to technology and to internet. So I think the question I wanted to... I kind of thought about it, I was like, should I ask, should I ask? You what should. do you think it would take, you know, for that moment to come where people be able to access, you know, free internet and be able to... Yeah. Well, I think before it gets free, uh, make it affordable. Yes. So everyone... Because not everybody the can largest afford, number, not everyone can afford smartphones. Yeah, yeah, the largest number of people can access it is very important. Absolutely. Um, but we are getting there. I mean, there are initiatives like uh, Google is uh, subsidizing, I heard... Um, a KOS phone, so KOS is another operating system yeah. which is go, goes on a, on feature phone. Sure. And uh, I think now you can buy in uh, Indonesia a phone for seven dollars that can access the internet. Okay, well I didn't know that. I've never been to Indonesia. So uh, I mean I think it's quite fantastic. That's quite uh, cool. And I'm sure it's going to hit other countries uh, uh, around the globe and mainly in Africa. Um, and I think the things we are working on with uh, with Nodo mm -hmm. and uh, what we call proof of connectivity, um, this way to incentivize actually access, sure. uh, maybe a way to actually uh, incentivize more people to also build their infrastructure and share it. Exactly. Because the, the problem of why you don't see internet access everywhere mm -hmm. is often because the reasoning be behind a, a telecom operator is, oh, I'm going to build an infrastructure or a tower if I'm sure I'm going to get the money back plus a profit for building that infrastructure. Sure. But if you lower this cost of building infrastructure, yeah. uh, which is the case because now more and more uh, protocols and systems get open source, the cost of hardware is going down. Interesting. So I think uh, if there is an organization or an, an ecosystem where you can at the same time incentivize people for building this infrastructure, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, then we're going to see uh, access becoming uh, easier and uh, reaching places where it didn't reach before. And uh, yeah, if we can contribute to that, yeah. that's It'll fantastic. Be amazing. It'll that's be amazing. fantastic. Yeah. Okay, final thing. Any any um, advice or any quotes or motto for a potential startup that you know is reluctant to start their own thing or who is currently in the process of starting their own business? So an <laughs> advice to future entrepreneurs. Yes. Um, or even current entrepreneurs. Just to say entrepreneurs. Well, never, never give up is really rule number one, like That's I was good. mentioning at the beginning. Yes. Uh, um, and then uh, I think you have, as an entrepreneur, you have to be confident facing your fears. Absolutely. And go in territories where you don't know mm. much. And also have the realize that at the end, as you move and you progress, yeah, it's always good to have the attitude of, well, oh, we don't know much yeah. and being always curious yeah. and, uh, sure. and learn because the market is changing and evolving constantly, very, very constantly yeah. and, and, and faster and faster. Yeah. Technologies are evolving also faster. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think that's very important. I have a, I came up with a, a sentence that I, I quote pretty often, which is, uh, victory is in the unknown. Wow. So you've cool. got to Victor's learn to be. To be confident to actually be in the unknown. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Misha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank it you, was Gloria. great to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's the end of it for our show, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.